Oh, wow, how beautiful. Yeah, Stuart, good night. Thank you, Winifred. If you could send my dinner up to my room, I'd appreciate it. You gonna try to make it up with Liza tonight? I said good night. I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Okay, I don't want to mess things up. <laughs> Hello, Stuart. Hi. Enjoy your evening, Liza. <laughs> Quite a setup. Uh, yes. Everything seems just right. Who are you expecting? You. Tell me what tempts you. Is Colby out with JR as we planned? Uh, yes, yes. Good, then that means I have the night off from playing nice with you. I promise you the foie gras is 100% arsenic-free. You know, I don't eat tortured, caged bird. <laughs> we need to celebrate, Liza. Celebrate? Celebrate what? That it's oh. been a, a, what, a month since we tried to kill each other? No. Our unique ability to work together to produce instant, perfect results. What are you talking about? JR's school advisor called JR is back in class, back applying his excellent mind. Well, good for JR. Yeah. And I realize that you have put aside a lot to help with JR. And I am grateful. Truly. And this is your way of showing your gratitude? Yes. And? And hoping that um, this will um, inspire you to let me thank you even further. How? That yacht trip we've been talking about for such a long time. The Mediterranean is beautiful this time of year. Champagne and flattery and a boat in deep water, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> I'd call it sumptuous and overdue. What do you want? I want to get you back again. What do you mean you want to get me back? I mean, I want to love you again more than anything else in the world. What's your angle? I don't have one. You, uh, you always have a selfish motive. It's who you are. All right. I miss you. And I don't like the life we're living. You know that. Yes, I do know that. Because we stopped communicating and now we just perform. Well, I've noticed something different in your performance lately. Well, then I will watch how I say pass the corn. Good night. You, you've shown me warmth, Liza, every time you see me with Colby. You know what? Because I care about preserving the peace, I will tell you that when I see you lately with your son or our daughter, that I have felt moments of hope. Yes, we have to seize that. No, we don't. I have to kill it. No, Liza, why? For Colby. We can't keep up this charade forever. Why not? <laughs> because she's too smart. Already she's asking, why, how come Mommy and Daddy talk nice and look mad? Well, then we have to watch the way we express ourselves. Oh, really? You think that's the solution to this? <sighs> look, I will tell you that this house divided is demeaning, and it's impossible to maintain. At my point exactly. But we have to try to keep it up. No, we have to try to reignite our passion and our love. What? You, well, you think a roll in the hay is gonna fix our problems? I'm, I'm not asking for sex, Liza. No? I've given a lot, too. Like what? Like trying to keep you out of jail. Oh, I see, but see, the flip side of that is that you get to keep your company afloat. Yes, because you embezzled from me. Right, and then you also made me think that I was dying, and, and I made you think that your son was killed in an automobile. Do you understand? There is too much hate in this marriage to survive. 
No, 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 it's not too much. It is not too much. I know it isn't. I know we can get past this. I know we can. Why? We, because when the doctors told me that you, you were really going to die, I said, God, please take me with her because I love her. I cannot live without her. That was an, an extreme moment. No, it was a crystal clear moment. You were my wife and my, my soulmate and the mother of my child. And I love you more than my life. Well, you have a terrible way of showing it. Well, it, uh, I'm not expecting instant marital bliss. I'm willing to work. We fight, Adam. Yes, we do. We fight, but we always, we always fight back harder. Because our love is stronger than our hate. This time, I'm not so sure. Well, I am. Liza. I can prove it to you. Just let me be your husband again. Let me love you, Liza. You know, as, as much as I try, and as hard as it is, when I feel so lonely, I can't find my way back to you. Why not? Because the chemistry of a marriage is... It's so complex. And ours is missing... a key ingredient. Trust. I don't trust you at all. I didn't do anything any worse than you did. Can you trust me again? Yes. Then you're a better person than me. Oh, that's absurd. M maybe it is. But this is over. No, no, try, damn it. I'm not going to risk the carnage of another one of our battles. You're being a coward. No, I'm being Th very brave. But by, by giving up? I'm, I'm begging you on the life of our daughter, who we love and adore. Don't, don't start another war because of ignorance or selfish pride. Be as strong like I'm trying to be. I couldn't do anything for Colby. I'm glad. Then we'll keep our separate quarters. You're making the biggest mistake of all our lives. Well, I appreciate you respecting my decision. And I'm... I'm sorry. Hmm. I really am sorry. Mother, can I come in? Liza! Oh, you're, you're supposed to be having dinner with Adam. Oh, I, I see. So it's a conspiracy. Oh, sweetheart, let me fix you. No, glasses. Mother, stop it. Really, are you, are you in on all these plans? Darling, I wasn't in on anything. Stuart told me that Adam was planning a very private special dinner for you, and I was just very hopeful, that's all. Oh, well, don't hope, okay? Adam and I are not reconciling. Oh, all right. What went wrong? Our whole marriage. And you know that. Oh, darling, it can't be that totally bleak. Try to be a little hopeful and practical, Liza. No, honestly, I, I don't know why I came here. I, I, I must have just leave. Sweetheart, whatever you want from Adam, I know it can be arranged. Mother, I need for you to face the facts that Adam and I destroyed our marriage. Oh, darling. There's progress right there, isn't it? You're taking personal responsibility. 
What's, what's wrong with you? Be a mother to me. C comfort me. I am being a mother. And I am trying to help you, Liza. How? By forcing you to answer a very important question. Do you still love Adam? I just saw Liza going down to the gatehouse. She looked sad. What happened? You don't need a blow by blow, Stuart. Good night. Did you lose your temper? I was very loving, actually. But that meant nothing to Liza. Sometimes you go so fast, Adam, it's hard for people to keep up. Liza can if she wants to. Well, maybe she was just tired. You, you could just be a little more patient. I could wait forever, Stuart. Wouldn't matter. Liza can never love me again. Yes, Mother, I suppose there are some parts to Adam that I love. Well, marvelous, darling. Try to grab onto that and pull your marriage back together. Well, you know, I wish I could. You've done it before. That was before I had Colby. And as I told you a million times, motherhood changes things. Darling, a, a divorce is going to be devastating for Colby. I haven't asked Adam for a divorce, Mother. You mean you're going to stay in a loveless marriage? I think... Listen to me. Mia and Stuart and I only... Try to divide your home temporarily to impose a peace. Well, it worked. No, that was just a beginning. No daughter of mine is going to stay in a marriage of convenience. It's a marriage of desperation. We do what we do for Colby. Without intimacy? Without danger of explosives. Liza, you're a young woman. How long do you think you're going to be able to handle that? God willing, the rest of my life. You've told Liza a lot of times that you're going to try to be a better husband. Wouldn't it be helpful if she'd believe me? We uh, haven't really given her a lot of reason to do that. She's not willing to try. Well, maybe you should uh, well, just try to be the best husband you can be, and maybe she'll come back on her own. I begged her, Stuart. I begged her. I shouldn't have to beg. I... I'm willing to forgive her. She should be willing to worship you. Like, like, uh, Dixie and, and Gloria. That's ancient history. And Mia? It's because you let Marion push you around. Mia had that look at him. What look? That, that wide-eyed, oh, I'm with Adam Chandler and he could hang the moon look. There's nothing wrong with a little respect. Unless you hurt your wife with it. Liza doesn't get hurt. She gets even. Oh, yeah, well, showing off with Mia hurt Liza's feelings. Liza never noticed. Even when you gave her sister that, that beautiful, beautiful fancy dress and, and, and one of Liza's necklaces, there's nothing going on between me and Mia. I know. You're just showing off. Because you're afraid that Liza can hang a few moons of her own. That's nonsense. No, it's not nonsense. She's your equal, Adam, in every way. What are you saying? That she doesn't need me? Yes. Exactly. She's, this is the one marriage that should work for you because it's not all lopsided. And, and it's, it's perfectly balanced like a, like a great work of art. And why is my marriage destroyed? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you exactly why. Because of, of Liza's disrespect. Well, to hell with her. I deserve to be treated like a man. <laughs> Adam. Adam. D don't, don't do something you're going to regret, Adam.
Don't you make a mean martini. <laughs> I've had practice. Practice makes most things perfect. So they say. Sorry I missed you. I'm um, up at the Valley Inn. I thought maybe we could, you could join me for a drink. We could play catch-up. Uh, it's um, just a little after nine. Probably be here for another hour. thinking the more things change the more they stay the same <laughs> you've no objections not if you don't why would I oh being seen with me might tarnish your reputation I'll take my chances excuse me another um what are you doing martini hmm. sounds good Martini, very dry. Two olives? Uh, make it three. I need the veggies. <laughs> what? 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 Did I say something? No, you were thinking it. I was thinking you have that lean and hungry look. Oh. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Thinking of trying to dust it up with the mistress of mixology there? For your information, she came on to me. Uh-huh. Well, there's going to be a cat fight if Mia shows up. If she does. Mia? You'd like that, wouldn't you, too? Attractive women clawing for your affection. How many of those have you had? Listen, I heard you calling Eliza's sister on the phone to ask her out for a casual drink. A prelude to what, I wonder? Uh Mia is family. Mm. We got to know each other very well when she was living with us. Mm. As well as you got to know Dixie when she was living with us. <laughs> she enjoys my company, damn it. Is that so hard to understand? No, it's not. Why shouldn't Mia enjoy your company? You're, you're smart, you're charming, you're intense. Why are you drinking alone? Whoa. <laughs> Could you signal the next time you change the subject? You're not one that usually pub crawls. Yes. Well, to you, this is a singles bar. To me, it's a quiet place. I can have a drink. Totally respectable. Like you. Damn straight. What do you think? I'm here drinking alone, drowning my sorrows in something 90 proof? Would you admit it if you were? I believe the conversation was about you and your affection for uh, attractive, impressionable young women. Mia may be young, but she's hardly impressionable. Aha. Uh -huh. So is that why you are here, drinking alone? I'm not alone. I'm with you. Thank you, I'm fine. Very funny. I think I'm a laugh riot. So where's Liza? Home. How's her health holding up? Fine, she's in the, in the pink. Hmm. No sign of the brain tumor? Mm -mm. All well. You want a note from her doctor? Well, you must be very grateful to have her back. Well, it's not as if she lost her memory and zigzagged around the country for five years. She's, uh, she had an illness. The surgery was successful. She's recovered. 
So why aren't you home drinking your own booze and celebrating how lucky you are? <laughs> lucky? Ooh, ooh. You know, that's a trick word, a tricky word, like um, success. She recovered from the brain tumor. The health of our marriage is quite a different matter. Well, surely you're grateful. I want my wife back the way she was before. What changed? Why should I tell you? You'll just take her side. Fine, you don't want to discuss it. It's... <clears throat> I know that I'm not a... I'm not that easy a man to live with, I know that. But, I mean, I mean I'm domineering and, and, and opinionated sometimes. I'm deceitful and egotistical. But if a woman can see past those faults and, and bring out the best in me, I can be... Incredibly kind and caring and loving. Now I know you've had too much to drink. In Martini Veritas. You still see some good in me, huh? Always. Despite the way I mistreated you when we were together? Oh, Adam. <laughs> I've learned a big life lesson. I've learned that there's some monster in all of us. And we have needs that are so powerful that they drive us to do almost anything to get what we want. My God. There's hope for you after all. Oh, yes. My secret is out. I've always wanted to be you when I grew up. To hell with the common herd. To live with passion. No, Adam. What I did was wrong. Yeah, well, to hell with right and wrong. Yeah, well, that's a fine philosophy if you're living on some distant planet or on some deserted island. Pine Valley will never catch up with us. Well, I will never catch up with you because I have walked in your calfskin loafers and I've done something that reeks of Adam Chandler and it was disastrous. Maybe you need more practice. Your shoes don't fit me, Adam. And I will hazard a guess that they don't fit you anymore either. My shoes were handmade in Rome. They damn well better fit. Think metaphor. I'm the same man I've always been. Really? I'm not the same woman. <laughs> Ten years ago, I would have never hidden the fact that Maria was alive. Ten years ago, you hadn't lost Edmund. Or Tad. Or, um, what's his name? That hermit that lived in the woods. Pierce. And we're talking about two different things. I know what you're talking about. You're saying that my bag of tricks is outdated, that um, my way of doing things doesn't work for me anymore. You know what? I am the last person to tell anyone how to run their life. When has that ever stopped you? <laughs> come on, Brooke, come on. Hey, hey, it's me. Give me your best shot. You asked for it. Adam, your problem is that you want what you can't have. And what might that be? This little flirtation with the barmaid, your phone call to Mia. You, you want somebody besides Colby to look at you the way Dixie looked at you. The way Liza looked at you before it all fell apart. You want to be adored. You want Liza to be the woman that she was on any one of the three, count them, three wedding days when she pledged her love and her life with you no matter what. But she, she can't be the perennial blushing bride, Adam. She knows you too well. And to know you is not always to love you. You're mean when you drink. You're mean when you're sober. But you know what? This comes straight from my heart and from our history. We had some moments. Many. And where is it all gone? <laughs> what? What? I don't know. The dreams, the potential, 
It seems that no matter how much we want things to work out, somehow happiness seems right, just right there beyond reach. Speak for yourself. Oh, really? Are you going to sit there and tell me that you are happy? Well, I, I thought uh, that I would be by this stage in my life. I thought I would have uh, gotten it right. <laughs> That's supposed to get it right. We're supposed to muck it up. <laughs> We're supposed to make mistakes. Until we learn what we need to know or else we're destined to repeat, oh, you know? Oh, yeah. Out with the bad karma, in with the good. We bust our humps all through this lifetime so we can come back as some enlightened who I'm the next. Possibly. <laughs> well, that's a load, and you know it. This life is a one-shot deal. Everything we can dream about, ever dream about, is right here, and it's right now. And the trick is to grab it if you can, and to hold on to it if you can. And for God's sake, whatever you do, don't apologize. Well, speaking of grabbing, why don't you grab the check and call me a cab? I have a very early day tomorrow. My driver's right outside. I'll take you home. I know I said I'd come in for some coffee, but I would love some brandy. I will join you. Is Jamie upstairs? No, he's um, spending some time with Ted. Brooke, why didn't you tell me? What about Jamie? Oh, that. Why didn't you say something? Well, you didn't ask. I asked why you were drinking alone. Well, I wasn't drinking alone because of my annulment. Why, why bring the Pope into this? What's wrong with a civil divorce? Maria's mother wanted to be sure that in the eyes of God, my marriage to Edmund never happened. Oh, I see. Well, I'm no theologian, but on which of the six days did God create denial? It was important to Isabella. Well, if God can put your marriage behind him, so can you. <laughs> you know, you are incorrigible. What are you looking for? Inner peace. Oh, dear. Fresh out. How about that record we wore out on our honeymoon? Ah. Uh... You know, vinyl's out and plastic is in. Mm. <laughs> May I have this dance? <laughs> oh, come on now, you're being silly. No. Why not? There's nobody to laugh at us but us. Um, okay. One dance, but I, uh, then I have to get to bed. Yes, ma'am. The song's not over yet. It's not our song anymore. So, 
Adam, really, I, uh, I have an early day tomorrow, so... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, your suit away. Okay. Adam? Come to our senses, come on. 